So I'm gonna teach you how to stealth camp in any city, in any vehicle. I avoided the unreasonable cost of housing in San Francisco by sleeping in a converted Nissan MV200. I'm gonna teach you things like how to find parking spots where no one will bother you, how to apply for a job without an address, and how you can not only save money by not paying rent, you can even find a better paying job by living in your car. By the end of this video, you will have an understanding of what this lifestyle can look like for you. So let's get started. Van life has gotten so much attention over the years for its unique lifestyle of constant travel and life on the road. But I adopted van life not for this nomadic lifestyle, but as a way to live in cities that would not have been accessible with traditional housing. I'm able to stay in cities for as long as I like without the pressure of being priced out, and I can move to different cities anytime I want. Moving anywhere that's accessible by car no longer requires looking for housing, signing a lease, packing all my belongings, or dealing with housemates. I just pick a city and start driving. With the stealth camping setup, you can do that too. You can stealth camp in any vehicle. It doesn't have to be a van. A sedan is possible, but more challenging, while an SUV will be more comfortable. There are many examples of clever camper setups in small vehicles, so there's a lot of room for creativity. As long as you can figure out a way to create a comfortable bed in your car and feel safe sleeping in it at night, you have a car worthy of stealth camping in. Here are some tips on how to make any vehicle more stealthy. The first one is window tint. On my van here, I have 35% tint on these front side windows and 85% on my windshield. If I was stealth camping in a passenger vehicle like the CRV, I would completely black out the back windows with 5% limo tint and 20 to 35% tint on the front windows. I would also black out the rear windshield too with 5% tint and either 70 to 80% for the front windshields. My next tip is to add dark color curtains behind your driver and front passenger seat. The combination of blackout tint and curtains will create complete privacy in the back space of your vehicle. My last tip is to add wind deflectors to your windows. You want to keep your windows cracked open while you're sleeping for fresh air and to reduce condensation building up on the inside of your windshield. These deflectors are great because they allow you to keep your windows open even when it's raining or snowing. And most importantly, they hide the fact that your windows are cracked open. Once you have a car that you feel ready to self camp in, try it out for one night in the city or on a weekend camping trip and see how it feels. From there, you can get a sense of what's lacking and figure out what you can do to improve it. The best way to find a long-term parking spot is to first scout for locations using Google Maps. There's really no limit to where you can find parking in a city. It could be in a commercial zone, residential, or anything in between. The goal is to find a spot where people pay little attention to your vehicle or just don't care if you're sleeping in your car. Here's a couple tips you can follow. Park on streets where other cars are parked at night. Busy neighborhoods or streets near apartment complexes are great because they're usually packed with cars and people living nearby don't mind seeing an unfamiliar vehicle. It's possible to park in quiet neighborhoods, but you want to avoid parking directly in front of a house. Instead, park next to an open area or non-residential structure like churches or public buildings. Parking lots can be a great option too. For example, some train and bus stations have large parking lots with free overnight parking with no limits. In California, there's usually parking lots near the beach, so look for the ones with free overnight parking. When I was living in San Francisco in my van, I eventually found the perfect parking spot. Every morning, I would get up, get dressed, exit through the driver's side door, then walk two minutes to the gym where I worked out and showered. From the gym, I would walk back to my van change my clothes, then walk five minutes to the train station to commute to work. I never had to move my van unless there was street sweeping, which meant that I was saving on gas and keeping my car maintenance costs down. I slept in the same spot every night in the middle of a neighborhood without any issues. The only way I could have found a better spot was if I parked within walking distance from my workplace in downtown. But I avoided that because car break-ins were unfortunately very common in downtown San Francisco so I chose to park further away and take public transit. The ideal parking spot is where you can safely park your car every night and have everything within walking distance or a short commute away. Your eating habits will undoubtedly change once you start city camping. What food you have access to, what time, and how much you eat will all fluctuate in the beginning when you try different things. 
and food costs will likely become your biggest expense. Not having access to a kitchen while living in an expensive city will make it challenging to keep food costs down. When I was living in San Francisco, I was eating out for all my meals and I was spending between $800 to $1,000 every month on just food. My biggest design regret for my van was not including a dedicated cooking setup. I can cook out of my van, but to a limited capacity. There can be a lot of creative solutions to keeping food costs down. You can cook outside of your car using a portable stove, ask a friend to use their kitchen to meal prep once a week. Personally, intermittent fasting is a great solution. I eat one big meal a day and that cuts my food costs roughly in half. There's also many studies about the health benefits of fasting. However you do it, managing the cost of food will be a huge way of reducing your monthly expense. Now, the most important thing to keep in mind when thinking about food is to prioritize eating healthy over reducing cost. I know the premise of this whole video is about sleeping in your car to save money, but saving money isn't life's greatest purpose. Your health is more important. COVID revealed to many people the fact that they didn't have to physically be in a workplace to get work done. For some, working from home was as effective or even more so than working from the office. And even if you don't currently work remote, a growing portion of the job market is opening up options to partially work remote or completely remote. This means that it is easier than ever to find an online job. Now, instead of working a remote job from a home, why not take it a step further and work from a van? You could be on the road traveling and recreating while still maintaining an income to support that unique lifestyle. It has never been easier to be a digital nomad. Remote work is ideal for this type of lifestyle, but having a job where you commute to a workplace is still feasible with car camping. When you look for a non-remote job, you might want to consider looking in dense or affluent cities because the wages in those communities are typically higher. For example, the minimum wage in San Francisco is always a few dollars more than the state average, so working in San Francisco would guarantee a higher wage than other parts of California. And because you're reducing your overall expense by eliminating rent, you get to benefit more from that wage increase and pocket more money. This is how you find a better paying job by living in a car. If you don't have a permanent address, what do you write on the address part of any tax form like an I-9 or W-4? The first thing you can try is putting a friend or family member's address that's fine with you doing so. If the address is obviously not within commuting distance from the workplace, you can ask your employer if it's okay to use an address of a house you don't reside in. This is not a strange question, so don't worry about what your employer might think. But if your employer says no, there's another solution. The other option is to use a commercial mail receiving agency or a CMRA. These agencies function just like a post office box in that it's a service you pay a monthly fee to have your mail be receivable from a temporary address. The important difference between a CMRA and a PO box is that the address you are given by a CMRA has no clear indication that it's a temporary mailbox. It looks like a regular address that could be your home. This is unlike a PO box in that it has the letters PO next to the address. There is actually no restriction on using a PO box on an I-9 or W-4, but if you don't want questions asked from your employer and want a temporary legitimate looking address, you should use a CMRA. Dealing with extreme temperatures in the winters and summers can be the biggest challenge someone will face while living in a car. In California, the weather is temperate year-round. That's why you'll find so many people doing van life here. The climate is especially mild along the California coast, where many homes within a mile or two from the beach don't even have air conditioning. But that doesn't mean you won't deal with uncomfortable temperatures in California. You'll still find nights where it's in the low 40s or days above 100 along the coast, which is a recent phenomenon. No matter where you live in your car, you'll have to face extreme temperatures, so knowing how to handle them is necessary. Now, my van is not equipped with an auxiliary air conditioner or heater. The only thing I have that helps manage the temperature in my van is my rooftop vent and fan. This fan will pull air through the side windows and through the top and can drop the temperatures in my van by 10 degrees in 5 minutes during a hot summer. 
The majority of my experience living on my van has been spent near the coast, so hot days come seldom. My biggest defense against the heat is basically something I do almost every day, which is not be in my van unless I'm sleeping. Most days out of the week, I'll be at work or when I started doing YouTube full time at coffee shops all day long where it's air conditioned. So overall, the heat doesn't impact me that much. The cold on the other hand is more of a problem. In the winters, I've slept through some chilly nights with the coldest night I've slept through being 38 degrees Fahrenheit. There have also been weeks where it's consistently in the low 40s. I can use a propane heater, but it's too much of a hassle to store and I'd have to spend money on propane. So instead, I will layer up with warm clothing, wearing a base layer and a jacket, then sleep in a low temperature rated sleeping bag. But let me make this clear. I honestly don't mind sleeping in this cold. I don't ever dread cold mornings where I have to wake up and get ready in the cold. It's not pleasant, but it's tolerable. I know I deal with the cold better than the average person, so just layering up and sleeping in a warm sleeping bag might not be sufficient for you. So here are some tips on how you can keep your car at a comfortable temperature. Tip number one, to keep your car warm, only invest in insulating your car if you have a heater. Insulation alone will do little to nothing to keep your car warm. You need a heater for insulation to actually have a purpose. Tip number two, in the winter, park where the sun will hit your car early in the morning. This will help warm up your car in the morning as you're getting up. And in the summer, park in the shade of big buildings or trees for as much of the day as possible to keep your car cool. All right, so tip number three is to consider getting custom magnetic window covers for your side windows. Now, if you were to get them, I would recommend getting ones with a reflective backing. Uh, this one doesn't, so let's just pretend this uh, black side is the reflective side. So in the summers, you would have the reflective side pointed outwards so it can reflect the sun's heat away. And in the winters, it would be facing inside so you can reflect the heat from, let's say, heater inside your vehicle back inside. Long-term car camping can be mentally exhausting because of the lack of a secure home base. But having a routine centered around spaces outside of your vehicle will provide the stability that will make this lifestyle sustainable. Here are some tips on how to do that. Take advantage of public spaces like libraries, parks, coffee shops, and gyms. Build a weekly routine by doing something by yourself in these spaces. For example, you can read a book in a coffee shop or library every Sunday morning, or talk to a friend over the phone while walking through a park after work. You can also journal on a notebook, exercise, listen to music or a podcast. Build a list of things you like doing in public and these activities will help anchor you in this new lifestyle. When you live out of a car, you're stripped of the basic amenities that a home has. Running water, electricity, internet. But living within the bounds of a city means that you have access to all those amenities. Public restrooms, hot showers at a gym, free Wi-Fi and electrical outlets at a local library. The issue is that they're not convenient to access. This is obviously the greatest downside to living in a car, but this drawback brings new opportunities with it. I have to go to the gym every day in order to get a shower, but I might as well work out beforehand because I'm already here. I have to go to the coffee shop every day to charge my phone and laptop, but I can interact with friendly people each time I'm there. But none of these opportunities were granted to me. I can walk into a gym to only shower and never touch a treadmill or wait. I can walk into a coffee shop and the only words I say to someone there is my coffee order. The actions I take will impact what will and will not happen in my life. Back in 2018, after finishing my van conversion, my first and only plan was to drive to Santa Cruz, California. It was a city I had fallen in love with during my college years, and I was eager to move back. I didn't have a plan for what I would do there. I was just going to see what it would be like just to be there again. When I realized I wanted to stay for a while, I went and found my first job while living in my van at a local photo print shop. I was slowly getting used to living in a van, and I was building a routine. After work, I would go to the same coffee shop that stayed open late. I had friends that worked at this coffee shop, so I would see them whenever they were on shift. 
And eventually, I knew the names of all the baristas and had friendly interactions with them every time I saw them. I had a group of people that knew my situation and some offered me a place to park my van and even a room if I ever needed it. Seeing these people every day and knowing that they cared about me was profound. This routine I built in the early days of my van life would later transform into the current way of life I have now, continuously seeking and surrounding myself with community. The reason why I stay in one city and don't travel around in my van is because I enjoy staying close to my community. I saw a familiar face every single day I lived in my van. And for me, that's what makes living in a van worth it. So I've shared with you what van life looks like for me. I've learned to adapt the pros and cons of living out of a car to fit my needs. But if you were to adopt this lifestyle, it would probably look a little different from how I do it. Now, the beauty in this lifestyle is that it's so flexible. You get to shape and mold it in a way that will help you achieve what you want. So, is this lifestyle right for you? You won't fully know unless you go try it out. But whatever you decide to do, I hope you find the best path forward. Thanks for watching and take care.